project route map, the UK government's guide to setting up for program delivery success. My name is Vivian Walters and I'm your host for today. I'm a member of the Pro APM Program Management Specific Interest Group. Our aim in the committee is to provide an international forum for effective learning and development of program management. A couple of announcements just before. Look out for the details of our annual conference in March 2022. It, it will be, uh, it, it, the theme is delivery in the midst of rapid change. It will be a collaboration between the program management SAIC and the portfolio management SAIC. Uh, the second item will be that post event, I will be writing a blog to continue the discussion. Today, we are joined by Ben Broglia, Susan Pramanik, and Anna Banerjee. So over now to Ben. Thanks very much, Vivian, for the warm welcome. And um, thanks everyone uh, for coming to listen to us today. Um, so my name is Ben Brolia. Uh, I'm the Project Initiation Capability Manager at the IPA, which is the Infrastructure and Projects Authority. Uh, so we report into uh, Cabinet Office and to HM Treasury, and we're responsible for oversight of the government's major projects portfolio and for assurance and uh, supporting of the projects on that portfolio. Um, so I'll hand over to Susanna to introduce herself. Hi everyone, um, thank you for joining us again and thank you Vivian for the introduction. My name is Susanna Pramanik, I am the international lead on the project route map or internationally known as project development route map. And I'm David Arnab. Thanks Susanna and uh, thank you Vivian. Uh, so my name is Arnab, I'm currently working in the, uh, in the Infrastructure and Products Authority and uh, I've been a long fan of RootMap and so uh, hence we're discussing this today. So Vivian, thank you for inviting uh, me to the program, SIG and us, and the last time I think I did one of these was in 2017 with the, with the change SIG. So, um, you know, in, in reviewing various topics that we could have discussed, Vivian and I landed on a key area that is critical to program success, which is project setup. Now, there's a very famous quote by Lord Brown, uh, which says that the lowest standards that are set at the start of a project are the highest standards that can be expected for the rest of the project. So investment of time and resource in a rigorous process at the outset is essential for success, and deficiencies cannot be recovered later. Now, we, we really all know this, and how can we go about addressing it? Which is really the segue to uh, Project Route Map, which is one of a number of key building blocks to good project delivery that's been developed by the Infrastructure and Projects Authority in the UK. So, on the assumption that most of you are sort of practitioners, uh, we'll do a couple of polls first, but then we'll talk about a couple of real examples of using uh, the project route map. And, uh, and, and then we'll essentially hand over to Ben and Susanna, who are members of the core team that has recently refreshed the route map. They'll work through the different parts, including its use internationally. Uh, we have a couple of polls and videos as well, and then we should have a very good, reasonable amount of time for questions. Okay, so while this finishes off, I mean, the, the first slide was quite skewed towards the left-hand side, I, in, in sort of the one and the two, which if the big pillars had been to the, to the right, we could have packed up and gone home. Uh, but but uh, but but they weren't. So and, and route map actually is very much focused on the front end, and so that that's a very positive uh, picture as to the, the the usefulness and the importance of route map. On the next one, what we can see is it's probably a little bit more uh, even, and and that's good. And and actually, what the route map does is address all of those issues. But in terms of providing confidence to stakeholders, that, that, that is also very enlightening and, uh, and, and RootMap does play a big part on it. So uh, sort of a, a reasonable big picture of, uh, of, of RootMap then, which is to say it's all about getting the setup correct. 
Now, RootMap's been around for a number of years and was developed uh, to support this very ambition. You know, it, it brings sort of the key parties together and asks the right questions. So in particular, and, and, and the vocabulary is really important here, the client is the deliverer, the asset manager owns the assets and the operations, the market is the supply chain, and the sponsor is the, essentially the owner and the funder. But we'll have more detail on that later. So if you could move on to the subsequent slide. I have a couple of uh, examples here, and these are from... Uh, and these are from my experience, personal experience. And when you talked about, you know, when the poll rating came out as, as giving assurance to others and giving confidence, that, that that is actually a very, very important element of RootMap. So the first one, the top one is a major program. I was head of development and assurance on that one. It had been going for a couple of years. And uh, as often happens, you know, the people internal to the program believed that everything was fine. Assurance reviewers did not. And the new program director, like every new program director, didn't think so because they want to change things, and, and external reviewers did not. So program project root map was really chosen as the vehicle to diagnose the issues using a structured process of interviews, reviews, and workshops, which was a mixture of external input and listening actively to internal views as well. And we actually carried out two full reviews, not three, uh, separated by a year and a sort of pulse or a short one in between. It allows us, allowed us to uh, evidence structured improvement and was critical in providing confidence, which we talked about in the poll, and further funding. Now, in contrast, the second example was one where I brought the whole team together, including some of the supply chain and external assurers. And we used route map checklists to work through the issues in a day. Now, this was a program where the SRO or the sponsor believed everything was great, but there were huge qualms and fears and worries in the team. Now, route map offered as close to an objective airing of knowledge and views as possible, and some logical changes were made. Now, this did not, however, have such a good ending. So the SRO remained something of a loose cannon, uh, you know, continually chopping and changing and indeed bullying, uh, to the point that I moved out. And over time, the program petered out, but not before considerable spend. And, 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 I, and I put that up to make the key point that root map is a tool. As ever, it is only as effective as its user. And if you move on to the next slide, please, which is my last one. So, uh, I'll end really by talking about engagement and a critical factor in any program, whether change or infrastructure, is, is about engagement. So a point I was trying to make by implication in, in the sort of the previous slides is that root map is about consultation and listening and collaboration. And critically, unlike a review or sometimes an audit, it's not done two or one way. It's an attempt to find a way forward together. And as you can see, uh, that can have, if you look at the curve, that can have a significantly positive effect on staff engagement as well. So enough of me, uh, over to Ben for some proper stuff. Thanks Arnab. And yeah, really good to hear from someone who's actually kind of used root map in anger. And uh, I really like the point that you made that RootMap is a tool and it's only as good as its user. Um, I think I might go a step further than that and say RootMap is a tool which doesn't provide you with all the answers. It's not going to tell you, uh, you know, what to do immediately. It's going to help you get to those answers um, by kind of thinking through them in a very structured and logical way. Thank you. Um, so what we've been up to in the last year in the IPA is actually uh, refreshing all of our root map materials. Um, so when I say root map materials, we've got a, a root map handbook, which outlines the process of how you actually carry out uh, a root map application on a project. And we've got a series of best practice modules, uh, which contain lots of uh, best practice guidance, experience from major projects and also kind of lessons learned uh, from them. Um, so over the past year, as I say, we've been uh, 
actually working with Turner and Townsend uh, to do this refresh and also uh, with over 100 project delivery professionals uh, across government, industry and academia uh, to refresh these materials. So this has been a really collaborative process, um, taking lots of input from really everyone who's kind of involved in uh, project delivery. Um, what's been great about the refresh kind of project, uh, it's really helped us and it's enabled us to take a step back and consider some of the, the uh, best practices and lessons learned from major projects since RootMap was first published uh, back in sort of 2016. And many of these experiences have been documented in the RootMap modules uh, from some of the UK's biggest and most complex projects. So we've got examples and lessons learned from projects such as Sellafield, High Speed 2, Crossrail and the London Olympics. So through the refresh, we've also made uh, the route map materials more accessible and user friendly. Uh, and we've broadened uh, the appeal of route map out beyond uh, the initial kind of infrastructure focus. So it can be used for most types of major complex and novel projects. So you see on the slide that we've got here, we've also got six cross cutting themes that projects can't ignore. Um, so these themes can really sort of place complex demands on projects. And if they're not addressed very early on in the project at setup, then they can cause issues later on. And these themes uh, will form a, go a golden thread throughout the updated modules. And we've got new considerations on the environment, social value, digital and technology, and people and behavior, which are really key to ensuring that projects are set up for success and they're fit for the future. As part of this refresh, we've also ensured that all of our materials are aligned with the UN Sustainable Development Goals and also the government standard for project delivery, as well as the upcoming government project delivery framework. So we've got a few kind of mini case studies here about who would use route map and why. Um, so there's many different reasons why you might want to use route map. You might be a new project team who haven't had the experience of uh, delivering a similar project, but they want to set off on the right foot. You might be developing your business case and you want some support in kind of working through some critical aspects. Or you might be working uh, in a less than effective way with some of your project partners and you need to do something about it. So route maps are really useful when you're doing something that's new to you. So it might have been done before somewhere else, but if it's new to you, then route map can really kind of help you out with it. Similarly, if it's something you're working on something that's on a larger scale than usual or you're working in a different way or you want to use route map to check if projects are ready to transition from one phase to another, for example, from design to delivery, or you're working through undecided critical aspects of the business case, route map can really help with all those aspects. So in route map applications that I've worked on in the UK, I think for me, one of the biggest benefits that I've seen is really kind of getting all of the key project stakeholders together in a room um, to really talk about some of the challenges that the project's facing the capability gaps that the project faces and really kind of get everyone on the same page and working together collaboratively to solve the challenges together. It's also really good for giving you an idea of what your stakeholders are thinking in the project, what's their, challenge, what's their opinion of the challenges ahead and where they think the capability gaps are. So this is just a simple graph to show when route map is most effective. So essentially this is just the graphical way of saying that route map provides the most value for projects at the front end. And when we say the front end, we really mean any time up to full business case stage. Um, it can also be useful though, when a project's undergone a reset or when it's moving into a new tranche of work to test that it's got the capabilities that it needs for the new tranche. If someone was considering to use RouteMap, I, I would encourage it. It provides a really nice framework to consider, maybe not 100% of everything, but just about everything you need to consider in those early stages of the project. We all know that a project that starts badly never recovers. Very often with projects, what, what we see is a kind of rush into doing things, getting on with it. And if you don't take that time at the beginning to really think through what you're going to do and then how you're going to achieve it, then it's very unlikely that you will succeed. 
We know from our experience of delivering projects that actually underinvestment in those crucial early stages of project preparation can lead to cost overruns, time delays and suboptimal outcomes. It's the time of greatest uncertainty, um, but it's also the time where you can influence the project outcomes to the greatest degree. Current challenges of major project delivery rely, lie in the kind of very kind of complex and dynamic the development of technology, of climate change, the pandemic, the social value that our infrastructure needs to provide and not just the, the economic value. We're, we're expecting so much more out of it these days. We find that projects find RootMap most useful in those early stages of project development when the ability to influence outcomes is at its greatest. Really the beauty of the route map is that it's scalable and flexible to any project's needs. Best practice and learning about the common causes of project failure, that's all captured within the route map, along with the sorts of killer questions you should be asking yourself. Do you know what you're doing? Do you know why you're doing it? It's designed to provide a structured way of thinking through some of these difficult and tricky and challenging issues, but in a collaborative way, so you can use it to involve your partners and stakeholders and work through these things together. It really helps you consider, are the behaviours and culture of your team set up the right way? Are you bringing in people with different backgrounds to drive diversity of thought? Do they feel safe to challenge? Do they feel confident that they're ready to progress to the next stage? So changing the way we think about projects will help us meet our commitments to the UN Sustainable Development Goals and Paris Agreement. But perhaps the, 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 the most significant benefit is the building of confidence with your key stakeholders. RootMap is very much the sort of gold standard in project delivery and, and, and to be able to demonstrate that you are applying it uh, along with tools like the five case model and, and the uh, construction playbook uh, can only be of benefit. One, one of the things that, that quite amazed me when, we, when I came to uh, engage with the route map was just the comprehensive nature of what it covered. You, you can use it in a number of ways. You can apply it um, as, as a rigorous process, or you can just dip in and out of it uh, to test your own knowledge and understand uh, the areas that you might feel that you need to improve on or as a project team. It ensures value for money can be sought at every step and that project development is sustainable so projects can benefit not only the economy, but society and the environment. My question to anybody asking whether uh, they should use the route map is, why wouldn't you use the route map? Yeah, just a few kind of views from across government, industry and academia there about um, what's kind of so important and useful about RootMap and kind of how you can use it most effectively. Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit now about how the RootMap methodology actually works. Um, so we've got a diagram here which actually sets out what we call the full RootMap process. And as we've alluded to in the video, there's a number of different ways you can use RootMap and you can really kind of flex it to suit what your project needs. But I'm just going to talk to you a little bit now about how the full RootMap process works. Um, so as you can see here, it takes place in three stages. So we've got setup, diagnosis, and action planning. Um, so the first part of the process, setup, is all about determining the scope of your route map application. So really kind of focusing in on what parts of the project you particularly want to look at. Uh, for example, you might want to look at your proposed governance structure or the design of your project organization, and as well as kind of who are the key stakeholders from across the project system that you need to involve in the route map application. So the second part of the uh, process then is diagnosis. And this one is all about information gathering and it uses a series of diagnostic tools. Uh, so one of these tools uh, that we use in route map is the NAO's Delivery Environment Complexity Assessment or DECA for short. And this really helps you to build a common understanding of the wider project delivery environment and the challenges it poses. So for example, the stakeholder landscape, the availability of funding or market capacity, etc. The second set of tools then are the capability assessments. 
So these help you to really understand the capabilities required by the key project organisations to deliver successfully in that environment. So that will be looking across the project system at the capabilities of the sponsor, the client, the asset manager and the market. And there'll be a bit more on that a bit later on. So these diagnostic tools have been informed by best practice and lessons learned from other major projects. And they're supported by structured interviews with key stakeholders from across the project system, which really helps to kind of give context to the analytical data from these tools. So the third and final part of the process then is action planning. So this is a really collaborative kind of aspect of route map. And this is where project stakeholders from across the system come together to develop practical solutions to address gaps in capability, which can then feed into business cases and move projects forward. So the route map materials really help with this whole process, in particular the modules, which are filled with good practice from other projects and considerations to, to help test your project development plans at every step of the way. So yeah, we've uh, talked a little bit about what makes route map quite unique and the fact that it takes into account the whole project system. And we've, take, we've talked a bit about the, the kind of roles that you might have in a typical project system. So sponsor, client, asset manager and market. So the route map will really assess the capability across the entire project system. So not just the sponsor or client, but really across the whole system and including the market and the asset manager as well. Um, so you can see how those, how those kind of roles are defined uh, in the diagram there. Um, one thing that route map is quite good at actually is, is kind of actually identifying who, which organization actually fulfills each of these roles. Uh, sometimes it's not always clear at the beginning of a project who's fulfilling the role of the sponsor. Sometimes an organization might be fulfilling the role of both sponsor and client at the early stages. But route map's kind of really good at drawing out who has what responsibility. And just to be very clear, we're talking in this sense about organizational capability. So the organizations involved with the project, so not individuals. As we found in RootMap, that most barriers to effective practice are really rooted in systemic issues and not in individual action. So you can see here we've uh, laid out our eight modules of good practice. Um, so we've really kind of tried to distill best practice and lessons learned from many major projects over the last few decades into each of these modules, which are kind of themed around areas where projects commonly encounter problems in their early stages. Um, so this is a really good way of kind of referencing back and checking that you've got all the right things in place, you've got the right capabilities you need, and you can really kind of learn lessons from other projects that might have gone through similar things to yourself. And you can actually use these modules on a standalone basis. So as uh, Simon Adams said earlier in the video, you can really just kind of dip in and out of them, pick up a module, have a look at the considerations and see how your project matches up against them. And if you find you're lacking in a certain area, there's plenty of considerations and there's best practice that you can use to kind of really inform your, your business case development. And now we're gonna have another short video which will hopefully make the process of applying route map to your project a lot clearer. Your project has the potential to deliver huge value, but you've never done anything quite like this before. As projects are becoming more and more complex, front-end planning is vital for securing successful outcomes. The evidence is clear. Upfront thinking at the setup stage leads to a more successful project. But how do we integrate best practice and learn the lessons of other major projects during those crucial early stages? This is where Project Route Map helps. Developed by the UK government, working in collaboration with industry and academia. Route Map brings together best practice and learning from hundreds of major projects over the last decade. It supports detailed front-end planning on how you'll deliver, which leads to better outcomes. Route Map helps you to set up your project by understanding the capabilities needed to succeed. But capability is more than just people. Route Map considers capability across people, 
processes, systems, governance, and ways of working. The route map process is flexible and can support you through a number of challenges. It's undertaken in three stages, setup, diagnosis, and action planning. The first stage is setup, where you plan the timing and scope of the route map and the specific areas to be targeted. It's a process which brings stakeholders together, so it's important to think about who to involve. The next stage is diagnosis. This is where you assess the complexity of your project and the capabilities needed to succeed using checklists, interviews and workshops. The findings from the diagnosis stage highlight the capabilities needed to give your project the best chance of success. RouteMap is supported by eight modules. These provide guidance and best practice across challenging areas of project setup. You can use them in the three-stage process or individually to deep dive into specific areas of your project. The final stage is action planning. Here, you work with stakeholders to develop practical actions and solutions, enhancing existing capabilities to the levels the project needs to succeed. Adopting the route map approach gives confidence to people delivering projects, approving them and investing in them. Set your project up for success with the IPA's Project Route Map. So hopefully that gave you uh, a better understanding of actually how you can apply route map to your project. Um, I talked a little bit earlier about how we've tried to uh, make the approach to applying route map a bit more flexible with this update. Um, so we've got the full 10 step process, which I kind of talked through earlier. So this is really if you, if you kind of want to get really involved in the project and you've got the time and space to kind of really think about and understand your capabilities and if you're set up for success. I think it's worth kind of pointing out at this point that um, route map isn't something that is, is done to you as a project. No one's gonna come in and do a route map on you. You have to really want to do a route map and um, the only way that a route map is gonna bring you any benefit is if uh, everyone who's involved in it is really kind of bought into the process understands the benefits and really actually wants to do the route map and um, is, is really kind of encouraged to think about what capabilities are needed. Um, we've also developed a, num a number of different approaches that you can use uh, to apply a route map. Uh, so we've got a modular deep dive approach, uh, which focuses on using the modules and the good practice in there and the learning uh, to address challenges in specific areas. Uh, for example, uh, if you are uh, having challenges with your risk management strategy, you might like to pick up the uh, risk management module and have a look at some of the best practice in there. Similarly, if you're having a, a, a very large, if you're developing a very large and complex uh, project that involves many different systems, you might like to look at the systems integration module, which has a lot of best practice there about really thinking uh, in system terms and how your how the systems created by your project interact with other systems that already exist and systems in the natural and the built environment as well. Uh, we've also got a diagnosis assessment, uh, which uses the capability checklist to identify areas for enhancement. And this can be really useful as well to kind of track your capabilities over time. So you might use the capability assessments uh, one year and then uh, a year on to check kind of how you're getting on and if your capability enhancements are working as you'd intended. Um, we're also looking to develop a portfolio assessment approach as well. Um, so this will be using the principles of route map in a structured manner to enhance the performance of your portfolio. Um, so that's in development at the moment and uh, we're hoping to launch that next year. So I'm now gonna hand over to Susanna to uh, tell you about some of the great work that's been done with route map internationally. Thanks, Ben. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm just going to bring up the rear here with the route map presentation just to let you know about what we've been working on internationally and I saw that a few people have joined from um, some international locations which is which is good to see so hopefully this will be applicable to you but in this increasingly globalized world and especially people in the project delivery profession working internationally as well as the UK 
it's hopefully helpful for you to be mindful that this is actually global best practice and not just UK best practice and is being taken up increasingly by international governments who we've been partnering with. So over the last few years, I was working on the Global Infrastructure Programme, which was a UK aid funded programme to take UK best practice and internationalise it and work with international governments um, to help them understand how they can incorporate this, their best practice into project development, specifically focused on infrastructure for this programme, but we know that route map can be used across different types of um, projects and programmes as well, not just infrastructure. Um, so we talk the route map and as well as that, the five case model, so the Better Business Case Guidance and then um, Centre for Digital Built Britain also um, deployed BIM and worked with governments to work on BIM and there were the three best practice um, areas identified for UK government to support international governments with in their project delivery capability. The international uh, materials which we published last year in 2020 were really the forerunner for the UK refresh. So through that we, we looked at the route map and stripped it back and made it a lot more user friendly in the handbook. So identified the 10 step process and also the modules. So as well as internationalizing those modules and making them applicable for middle income countries in particular, there was also, because it was UK aid funded and also because it's the right thing to do, a very strong focus on sustainability. So environmental and social sustainability, strong alignment with the UN SDGs, Paris Agreement and requirements that countries will need to make to understand and stick to their commitments under those agreements, as well as the International Financial Corporation Performance Standards. So this is part of the World Bank. And these are the really international benchmark for environmental and social sustainability, which a lot of the multilateral development banks will use to develop their own frameworks. And the multilateral development banks are really important because one of the core reasons our programme existed was to help countries to address that multi-trillion dollar gap in funding from the difference between projects that need to be developed by middle income countries and the finance and funding made available to them. And a lot of that is due to, do, is due to the fact there's a lack of bankable projects coming to market. So those themes we picked up on earlier about increasing confidence of funders and finances in those project teams developing the projects that they have the capability to actually deliver the project successfully and meet those objectives and benefits to benefit the poorest in societies as well as environmental benefits as well. We worked really closely in particular with the countries of Indonesia and Colombia and that the work there, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit, bit about the work um, and the case studies of deploying route map there after this slide, but it really helped inform the international materials. So understanding well, what's applicable um, and really, um, it really is applicable, <laughs> was, was the big learning. It really is welcomed, um, everything the route map does. It's quite unique and different in, in the way it, it works with stakeholders together, the way it looks at capability and complexity together, and the way that with the action plan, you have a real tangible action plan to deliver and build your capability in your project, which countries and projects really appreciate as well as developing the international materials we also develop bespoke materials for indonesia and colombia um, which sit with them now and then the international materials and training across those two countries as well as peru mexico and brazil and now we're working very closely with south africa with infrastructure south africa which are the equivalent to ipa really in south africa and India are coming on board too and working very much through our embassies and through the international governments there and also rolled out training. Um, so training and understanding how you can actually apply the route map to your, to your projects and programs and we trained around 350 officials across those governments in the route map methodology, um, applying it to a case study and we're looking to start training in the UK as well next year. Um, so watch the space on that one. Thanks. So this is just a quick look at some case studies, as I mentioned, um, when we were undertaking the Global Infrastructure Programme. That there were supposed to be pilots, they ended up being full route maps in the end of supporting really key strategic projects and programmes in our key partner countries, Colombia and Indonesia, to understand um, 
how we can adapt the route map, but primarily to also support those governments to develop to develop key infrastructure projects and understand the capability they need to develop them. So the first project we worked on, um, actually the first project was Indonesia um, on the strategic road project. So this was a project looking at their roads pipeline and in particular the first projects being developed using availability based payment mechanism. So what we were doing there is really understanding actually what was the client capability required to engage effectively with the supply chain and to manage the delivery outcomes for that particular delivery model. You know, availability based payment requires different capability within the client organization um, and trying to understand where those gaps lie in their capability and how they could build, build their capability in those areas. It was really also important if we look at the market capability and thinking back to those four key roles that Ben mentioned, actually understanding the broader market's ability and appetite to respond to the requirements over the life of the infrastructure. So I went to a market sounding exercise as part of that and just sat and listened. And the local market and understanding of what's required in availability based payment, PPPs, um, compared to other types of um, delivery models um, they've used in Indonesia to deliver roads was, was really quite stark and there was clearly an understanding that there needed to be a lot of market engagement and readiness to get that market to succeed um, in delivering um, successful bids against that project and that project actually um, went live um, last year which is which is good to know and used a lot of that learning um, in Indonesia as well, we worked with the World Bank on um, a particular project with West Java Provincial Government, looking at transit orientated development site and a light rail line in particular, and actually very much in the um, SOBC stage, so the strategic outline business stage, business case stage, looking at those early capability requirements in particular to governance, rationale and dependencies on this particular project on the wider program that was looking to be developed to, to develop that area, regenerate that area in Bandung. As you'll see there, some really positive feedback from the World Bank as to the value of the route map that it provided to the project. And that's been echoed by the governments we've worked with in Indonesia and then in Colombia, um, which was a pilot I led last year as well um, on a nationally important freight rail corridor project in Colombia. So that was looking at very much, if you know anything about Colombian Rail, um, which you may not do, um, then they have just implemented now or just um, launched the Rail Master Plan, which is actually looking to revitalise rail in Colombia, which hasn't been touched for decades. So really there, we were looking at the sponsor requirement and capabilities to understand, well, how capable are they during the investment and delivery planning process? to make sure that the project remains viable and aligned with strategic objectives. So very much looking at regulation there and re regulation required, um, and also looking at the market's ability to respond um, to, that, to that particular um, project and also how to attract international markets. So not just Colombian local market, what do you need to do to make this attractive to be bid on as well? So that gives you a bit of a, a bit of a flavour as to the international work we've been doing and now that, that the global infrastructure program closed in spring so now we're working with all those governments to further embed the route map in their processes in indonesia it was written into legislation as part of the government action plan to incorporate route map and consider it as best practice when developing infrastructure projects in colombia the route map has been identified as best practice on the department of national planning website and they've been responsible for developing the, the rail master plan as well and is very much being used and picked up and considered for projects so it's still very much being used and I think being a cross route map um, not just in the UK but internationally will will definitely give you um, another weapon in your armor when going and supporting project development I think Ben's going to discuss some UK case studies now Thanks, Susanna. Yeah, and uh, really great work internationally, and it's really good to see um, the best practices kind of being picked up and used internationally. Um, so yeah, just a, a couple of quick case studies then on when RootMap has been applied to uh, some novel and complex major projects in the UK. 
Um, so both from Bayes, so uh, Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. Uh, so the first then was on the hydrogen heating program, which is a key part of the uh, sort of decarbonisation uh, strategy. Um, so RootMap really helped here in kind of transitioning the um, the project team from a, a policy to a delivery oriented mindset. And really getting them to think about what kind of capabilities they needed when they moved into this new phase. Um, we also did one with the uh, geological disposal facility in base and this is all about uh, kind of the, the um, disposal of radioactive waste in a, in a safe way deep underground uh, to make sure it's, it's kind of kept safe and secure as it degrades. Um, so Bayes actually used, uh, so the, the Bayes GDF program team actually used RootMap uh, twice and the second time, uh, which was um, when I was uh, involved in it, was very much when they were moving from one phase to another. So they were very much moving into their community engagement phase. And as part of that, they needed really a, a, a very different organizational design uh, to before. Um, they need to focus on their communication strategy, their messaging, having a, a kind of a common message uh, to people agreed. Uh, and also tailoring that message uh, based on kind of what what community they might be talking to. Um, so yeah, the GDF program really found that very helpful to kind of focus their minds uh, for the upcoming tranche of work, and uh, and they were very uh, very supportive of RootMap and and really kind of involved in it. Um, so I think that's about all from us. Uh, so any questions, please. Thanks for listening. Vivian is kind of going to answer yeah. some questions that have come in. Is it assumed that you would have accredited users or simply use the handbook? That's a good question. So um, I think with the, the refreshed handbook what we've really tried to do is make uh, the route map process a lot easier to apply. Um, you can apply it to your own project but you might also find it useful to engage with uh, an external third party organization uh, to actually uh, support you in carrying out the route map. Uh, the reason for that is that it, it can take a bit of uh, resource to, to actually apply a route map, especially the full process. And also kind of having that independence uh, of, of kind of um, having people kind of looking from the outside in can be quite useful to kind of keep things relatively objective. Um, having said that, we are looking to roll out training uh, to government departments on route map uh, in the new year. Um, so uh, that's really going to help to kind of build up a, a pool of um, route map uh, accredited facilitators who can actually uh, go into um, government major projects and actually carry out full route map processes. Um, but what I would say is that um, don't let it put you off. Don't let uh, the size of the handbook put you off. Uh, actually looking at route map I think um, regardless of whether you're you're kind of carrying out a full process um, or not I think there's some there's some really uh, interesting and helpful material uh, in the modules particularly that can really help to kind of challenge uh, your project planning and to really kind of make sure that you've considered everything that you need to consider in, in kind of um, setting up your project but I don't know if uh, Arnab Susanna you wanted to come in on that at all yeah, so all the materials are published um, online and free for anyone and everyone to use. Um, we've known, we've we've heard uh, through informal and formal feedback that the private sector do use it, working with clients, working with government departments as well. Um, so it, as Ben said, the value of materials is really good. The handbook really is is almost um, a very simple guide to developing route map as we've said we wanted to make it really accessible I think once you've done your first one or once you've been, been involved in one and you've you've kind of have an understanding of how the process fits together it becomes as with all things a lot a lot quicker and more efficient for you to deliver more route maps but the materials are written in a way to help you apply it to your own project um, if you can get a third third sectors and um, third party support that that's also helpful or thinking about the three lines of defense in terms of insure assurance doing it within your own team on your own project doing it with other people in your organization maybe facilitating it or then have an independent um, person coming and helping you through that process as well they're, they're different ways to deploy route map I don't know if Arnhem's got some thoughts as well I think I'll mute 
remembering and forgetting to to unmute myself. Um, so I, I would say you could do it yourself. Uh, you know, obviously, external facilitators are always useful, but uh, as a couple of examples I gave you before, the words are very uh, clear and it is possible to do it yourself or you can see it as a peer review so you know one part of the business where maybe does uh, works a route map with another part of the business so it's not just the just the project itself so there, there are lots of ways you can um, you can handle it I, I can my i can see some questions on slido which uh, there's one very interesting one thank you so the question here is who owns the route map is responsible for implementing the agreed actions and monitoring their effectiveness on the project. So my my answer to that would be the actual the program team and indeed the SRO and the sponsor. So it's about taking ownership of that. But I think you touched on that previously, both Ben and Susanna. So if you can maybe expand on that, how do you how do you see that? Who owns the route map? Yeah, I'd absolutely agree, Anna. It's the project team and the program team where the Infrastructure and Projects Authority come in for GMPP projects in particular. So if you are a GMPP project and would like to know more route map, please do get in contact with us. Um, but where we do is help facilitate and lead you through it. But really the end product and the process is owned by the project and it needs to be because there are actions that need to be developed and delivered by the project and there will be people who will be responsible for delivering those actions and a project can only really leverage the most of route map if it's committed to to undertaking and um, seeing out those actions to develop its capability and Ben as well okay. uh, absolutely I, I just wanted to say as well one of the things that um, makes you route map quite unique is that it's completely owned by the project so it's not like an assurance review where you'll have a DCA which will be reported in an annual report which will go on gov.uk for everybody to see. The, the outputs from RouteMap will be completely confidential for the project um, and only shared with the IPA. Um, so it's really, yeah, completely owned by the project for them to take forward. It's very much a support tool. It's not something to kind of, um, you know, for the IPA to check up on you or report on you in any way. It's very much to kind of help support um, setting up for project success. Okay, so there are a couple of things which I might uh, just quickly run over, which is agile, it says, tends to be the method of choice. Do you see any conflicts with the route map? The answer is no. It's it's very it's, it's methodology agnostic. It's uh, the methodology is how you set it up, and it'll help you to decide which way to go. But conscious of time, I'm going to finish off with another popular question. Which says, uh, and which takes me back about 25 years. It says a subtle point on the first question. Sometimes the project team aren't provided a handover quickly enough from the bid team, and that reminds me of a story. I, I worked on a tender for many years, for many months, 12 months. Got the order, went away on holiday, and I came back, and the project director told me my name was Mud because he didn't know what I'd actually sold. Now that was wrong because I involved his team, but that's beside the point. However, at the, the, the power of route map is at these interfaces, you can do route map and, and understand what exactly the dimensions are. So whether you're taking over from policy or whether you're taking over from a sales team, the route map is a hugely powerful diagnostic to run through all the strengths and weaknesses of the project and program and indeed particularly the setup of the program so i don't know whether you want to come in on that ben and susanna just to finish off for today i think yeah agreed on and i think um particularly uh, you just brought to mind our asset management and systems integration modules and i think they've got some really good uh, considerations that really speak to that concern about having the right information on in handover from you know from one team to another or from one stage to another making sure you've got that that right information making sure it's in the right format making sure for example that the asset manager's got the information that it needs to manage the asset properly um, so yeah that's a really that's a really key consideration that's in uh, a lot of the root map modules but i think particularly the asset management and the systems integration modules um, really useful to kind of help to um, to challenge on that point. Okay, and maybe we have one one more question, which is uh, had it has had a couple of upvotes on Slido. So it says getting resources on board is always an issue. What do you suggest to speed this up? And uh, I guess my answer to that would be it's all there's no easy answer to that. Uh, 
but the route map helps you to diagnose what you want. You know, is is your organization capable of delivering? But you know, Susanna, the thing you mentioned about your client in Indonesia having client capability. Once you diagnose that, then you can understand the resources rather than thinking about numbers first and capability second. Question related to resources to deliver a route map or resources in general to deliver a project. No, I, I think I th I'm, I'm assuming it's a project resource thing to deliver. Right. Yeah, um, client capability and understand that. Thank you. Thank you. Take care and do have a good afternoon, everyone. I'll be ending the bye webinar bye. now. Yeah, bye.